So that's just a joke. As far as an underrating, Seahawks is probably the most underrated team on here. I, and I'm not even done yet because I just saw the Steelers coming in at an 80, and that's another team. Didn't they win like their first 11 games last year? Like, how are they an 80 overall team? Stay hey. off the w Duh. Welcome back, YouTubers and Mad fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the Mad Cheese as always. Got another Madden 22 preview video for you guys today. Today I'm going to be going over the team ratings that, as far as I knew, might have came out a little while ago, but I never saw anything about it. I didn't see anybody covering it. So, actually, it wasn't even easy for me to find. So, I'm going to guess that if I couldn't find it very easily, that you guys probably couldn't find it very easily as well. So, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give you guys the all the teams' ratings, all 32 NFL teams, as well as my take on which ones are most overrated and underrated. Just give you my reaction like I typically do. So, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments section and hit the like button. Uh, this is also another video that I'm doing with my face in the camera. If you guys missed my last video, I said that I'm going to start doing more face cam videos. I'm probably going to be doing the majority of my videos like this. So if you like that as well, do me a favor, hook me up with a like uh, just to show support if you've been supporting this channel for a long time. So other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. So I'm going to start off with the number one team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. No surprise that they're the number one team. I'm a little surprised at how highly rated they are though at a 92. Um, it just kind of looks like they're that much better than everybody else. And I do agree on paper, if you just look at the players that they have, yeah, they look like the best roster in the league. But when you look at how they played last year, they didn't necessarily play like it. They didn't necessarily blow anybody out in the playoffs, with the exception of maybe the Super Bowl, where the defense really won the game for them, in my opinion. Um, they didn't really, I mean, they got into the playoffs as a wild card. They struggled in the first round with the with the Washington football team. So it's like, yeah, they, their roster looks amazing on paper, but it, the, the results didn't necessarily match. And they did win the Super Bowl, I get that. But I'm just saying, it's just, to me, I, I don't know if they're two points better than the next team. Number two, we have the Chiefs. Can't argue there. That's kind of standard. They lost the Super Bowl. They look like they have the highest rated offense. And that's a little bit, I mean, despite the fact that they did lose a lot of linemen, they lost Sammy Watkins in the offseason. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you have Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and Travis Kelsey, that's all you really need. I don't agree with the defensive rating. Though. I think the Chiefs defense is better than a 78. Number three, we got the Packers. Can't argue there. Number four, the Ravens. I, I think that they're pretty much in line here. Number five, we have the Browns. Uh, on paper, they're a team similar to the uh, the Bucks, where there's just not a lot of holes. Um, I'm surprised that they gave the Browns such a lowly rated defense at a 79 overall rated defense. Uh, but without a doubt, the Browns, uh, I think that's that's a good top five there. The only team that I would argue could probably be in the top five or should be in the top five is the Bills uh, at an 86 coming in number six. They had one of the best offenses in the league last year. I feel like their offense is getting kind of slighted. They don't necessarily have the star power after Josh Allen and uh, Stefan Diggs. Maybe they just don't have the star power after that. Number seven, the Cowboys. I don't know how the Cowboys come in tied with the Bills. The Bills were in the AFC Championship game last year, and the Cowboys come in with the exact same rating. So to me, they probably deserve one of the worst defenses in the game. Their offense definitely has a ton of potential. Um, they definitely have one of the best three wide receiver sets. Uh, you know, the running game should be really good with Elliott and, uh, you know, the offensive line, I feel like, um, you know, they still have two star caliber players on the offensive line. So I agree with their offensive rating. I'm not sure if I agree with it being higher than the Bills because the Bills offense was so good last year, but I think without a doubt, they're a little overrated being tied with, uh, you know, tied for sixth best roster, especially when EA is owning that they have a horrible defense, giving them a 76. Uh, moving on, we also have the Arizona Cardinals at an 85. I even feel like that's a little bit of an overrating. Then you got the Titans, who, uh, were they like 12-4 and four last year? It's another team that's been to the playoffs. They, two years ago, they were in the AFC Championship game. I feel like they're underrated. They should probably be higher, uh, especially with adding Julio Jones. That's like the biggest addition to Madden 22. Any team made was Julio Jones. So I don't know how that didn't bump their rating up to the point. I mean, I, to me, with Julio Jones and Derrick Henry, I feel like they're a Super Bowl caliber team. Uh, and I guess 85 is not a bad rating, but I'm just saying that the order here, I feel like it's falling apart a little bit the further you go down the list. Then you got the Chargers. That's another team. They really, you know, they have a lot of potential every year. I feel like that's an overrating to have them ahead. I mean, they're tied with as far as rating goes, but they have them on this list ahead of the Rams. Now, the Rams had the best defense in the league last year. They should still have one of the best defenses in the league this upcoming season. So to me, they are, they're underrated. I think they should be a couple points higher because they made a, a bunch of additions. They lost some cornerbacks, they lost some safeties, and I know that's gonna be, you know, that's not gonna help their defense, but at the end of the day, it should still be like a top five defense just because of the Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald alone. But then you look at uh, what they did on offense though, 
adding Matt Stafford, I think, is a huge upgrade. They also added Deshaun Jackson. His speed, he's still a game, you know, game-breaking receiver. Uh, adding him to that receiving core, those type of moves, I think, are going to make the offense even better. Which is scary when you think about how that's pretty much a team that's known for their offense. I mean, they might have a top five offense, top five defense. I don't know how they're so far down this list. Then you have the Saints. The Saints are a team, they lost a lot of players too. When I looked at their roster, when I did my top 10 teams roster, I'll put a link in the description if you guys can check that out. Here's another team, severely underrated, the San Francisco 49ers at an 83. When I did my top 10 teams list, the number one team that people said, why are this? Why is this team not there? That was the Niners. So I, I tend to agree. Their roster, they're, what, a year removed from the Super Bowl? But I do feel like they probably deserve to be closer to like an 85 or, you know, in the top 10. I agree that they probably should be in the top 10. Then you have the Patriots who had a really strong offseason. Then you got the Broncos next. Now that's a team that was on my sleepers list. I'm very high on the Broncos, especially their defense. I think they have a lot of talent on their offense, but until they get a real quarterback, I don't know what they're really going to be. But I wouldn't have them ahead of the Seattle Seahawks. The Seattle Seahawks coming at an 82. They're a top 10 team, in my opinion. I mean, just their, their offense alone, if they have any deficiencies, they don't really have maybe like a great tight end. They don't really have, uh, you know, a great... Um, offensive line, but it's like their receiving core is, it might be second to none. They have a great running game with, uh, with Carson and obviously they have one of the best quarterbacks in the league. So their offense is definitely the higher rate of the two. Their defense is a bit spotty. I mean, Bobby Wagner is still one of the best linebackers in the game. Jamal and Adams is one of the best safeties in the game. So that's just a joke. As far as an underrating, Seahawks is probably the most underrated team on here. I'm, and I'm not even done yet because I just saw the Steelers coming in at an 80 and that's another team. Didn't they win like their first 11 games last year? Smoke weed every day. Like how are they an 80 overall team? I'm not even there yet. So let's keep going. So next up we have the Washington football team. Their defense coming in at an 81 is criminally underrated. This is a top five defense. I don't know how you can look at their defense and when the additions they made bringing in William Jackson at cornerback and you know they, they have a lot of young stars on the rise like Chase Young I don't know how you can look at their defense and give it an 81. Stay off the weed. Then you have uh, the Raiders at an 81. I think they're pretty a pretty solid team not spectacular. Colts 80 once again solid team not spectacular. Here you look at the offense and defense rating again. How is the offense and defense rated 78 and 75 but somehow the rating of the Colts is an 80. That Ooh. makes no sense. Where, explain that math. Is there special teams 100? I don't understand how you go from a 75 offense and 78 defense to an 80 overall. So then you have the Steelers once again one of the most criminally underrated um, in the entire game again. I mean, they were one of the best teams in the league last year So having an 80 is a bit of a joke. The Bears come in at a 79 um, You know once again great defense not a ton of offense the Dolphins come in at a 79 That's another team on the rise a lot of young talent and then you have the Giants right after that Tell me how the Dolphins and the Giants are, are one point apart the Dolphins were were they 11 11 and 5 last year and the Giants were like 5 and 10 and 1 or something like how are they a point apart? Weed! I know talent-wise, the Giants add a lot of talent, especially on offense, but they still have one of the worst offensive lines in the league. They still have one of the worst starting quarterbacks in the league. Some of these teams got to prove this stuff before they get a rating. And I, to me, the Giants should probably still be like a 75 or 76. Maybe a team on the rise, maybe a team that has a lot of young talent, but they have to actually do something before their overall reflects that. Then we got the Vikings also tied with the Giants at 78. The Vikings have at least been a little bit more consistent over the years as far as their record's concerned. Um, so I think maybe they should be a little bit higher. Then you got the Falcons. Falcons, the Eagles, I don't think their rates should be that high. They were abysmal last year. Then you got the Texans coming in, tied for 76. They're another team I think that we all expect them to be in the running for the number one um, spot in the draft. I, don't, I think they could have they could have one of those seasons where we're just waiting for them to win a game, especially if Deshaun Watson never plays for them. Then you got the Bengals. Uh, the Bengals, I mean, I think they have a lot more talent than people give them credit, but like these are all the bottom feeder teams that we all have to see win before we give them higher ratings. So I can't argue with any of these. And then the Panthers at a 73. Now that one I have a problem with. I think Sam Darnold was an upgrade. They're getting Christian McCaffrey back. Uh, their defense has a lot of young looking stars like, like Brian Burns and Jeremy Chin. I don't know how the Panthers aren't higher rated. I think they should be a little bit higher, closer to the Falcons. Or, you know, I think they should be viewed as a team on the rise. Give them the second worst rating is a joke to me. So I'm gonna end the video there. I'm extremely disappointed to see the Panthers so low because they're gonna be one of my favorite teams. They're one of my favorite teams to use every year. They're gonna be one of the teams that I use when I do some live gameplays this year. Like I said, I'm, I'm using this camera the whole time because I'm trying to get comfortable in front of 
a camera, uh, trying to get better at you know using camera stuff so I could do some live game, play some live streams. So if you guys want to see that, as always, hit the like button or let me know in the comment section. That's it. That's the video. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.